I want to welcome you all back. This is the week 11 recorded lecture for Safety 41 Analysis and Design, which I like to call Senior Design. Is that what I call it? Yeah, I think I call it Senior Design. So, hope you all had a nice spring break. Um, hopefully you got to recover a little bit or work ahead or get caught up. It's what whatever. Um, I didn't accomplish but half of what I had anticipated I would do because other stuff came up. But still, it was a busy, busy week. I'm hoping we can work ahead now. So this week, it's going to be another uh, skinny or light week for work. Uh, I was kind of looking ahead and we've covered so much stuff that I don't know how much more I want to throw at you because I know your other classes are probably getting kind of busy. And so, um, yeah, I'll be working that out, but I'll kind of talk about it. Um, so the assignment, yeah, let's bring up the assignment and then I'll kind of show you these other things. Oh, I don't know if I have those popped up or not, but when we get to it, I will. So first, let's bring over the agenda for this week. Here we go. Pretty sure you're seeing this. So for this week, uh, I've got this video and I'm gonna review, I'm gonna score or talk about three of the case studies submitted and make some recommendations. I think they're very good in their own account, but we can learn from each one. The assignment this week is a case study for something that I'm working actively working on right now and it, it is challenging me and so I want you all to kind of think about it and give me your input. And more importantly though, I'm gonna talk about what's coming up. Um, for this third round of um, interviews, I want you to find a mentor on your own. I think that's important. And whether it's someone through LinkedIn, whether it's someone through your your current, you know, where you're working right now, I want you to identify someone that you would consider an, a mentor because they've got experience. Um, it could even be, you know, a former student of mine, whatever. But I want you then also to interview them. Now, one thing I've learned from the interviews that you guys have done so far is that some of you are waiting too long to schedule it and so it's kind of rushed. Another is some of you are either rescheduling or not showing up. That doesn't bode well because they do contact me. You know, they're like, hey, so-and-so hasn't contacted me yet or hey, so-and-so keeps rescheduling. Uh, you know, this this is the time when you guys really need to work on your professionalism and make sure when you make an appointment, you make you can attend that appointment. Uh, one rescheduling is fine, but you guys need to not adhere to the the stereotypes that go along with with college students. Um, fight against that. So make sure you, and so some of the questions and answers you guys have been getting too is, sure, you guys are anxious, concerned about the next step, or you're making things work out. Uh, I want to challenge yourself, and I want you to think, you know, in three to five years, what is it going to take to get there? Uh, what sort of work do you need to put in? What organizations do you need to join? What sacrifices do you need to make um, based on, you know, what they recommend for you? Because really... You guys have more opportunities than your predecessors. I know I had to work my derriere off to get to where I am. And it's taken a lot of personal sacrifice and it's taken a lot of extra work and me extending myself to get to where I am. And you know, you know, and, and now what I'm seeing is that a lot of those opportunities are being afforded to you very readily, yet we have students who are not taking advantage of it. And so that's what the next... Uh, interview is going to be. So this week, what I want you to do is try to identify someone who will challenge you and give you some good insight. In addition to that, the Capstone interns, they have been doing some fantastic work. I've been reading on their on their journals what they've been working on, and they are perf outperforming previous semesters. Thank goodness. That was uh, That's what I've been working on this class to do. I'm sorry, that didn't sound right. Last semester, I had a lot of those students in my A&D or senior design class, and so I was working to get them to a higher level, and they've, they're have they they're achieving that and more. Um, it, it, I'll, maybe I'll talk about that more next week as you guys, as the next week we'll be preparing to review their second case study or working with them to find out what they learned from their first case study that they can apply to their second one. It kind of aligns with what I'm going to cover with you today or in this video at the end. Um, 
So, and you know, I'm gonna, there, are, there are obviously, you know, things we can all work on. Let's remain optimistic. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've been going through. And again, there are things that sure could be interpreted as, uh, you know, putting down the work I've done or, you know, not having the support. But I look at all things. I mean, either you succeed or you learn. Let's, let's just lay that out there. And if you guys are going to try to adopt something, you're either going to succeed or you're going to learn. And I think the learning is, is, is really important. And don't try to take it personally. And what can you do to advance without being sort of accusatory or whining about it? What can we do? You know, look at things positively. And I know that my my supervisor, you know, she has seen that in me. And I think she feels good about, I can talk to him about anything. Even if it's, you know, somebody's degrading him. He takes it in a positive way and wants to build from it. So... I think that's what you want to do as a student. And that kind of goes along with some of the things I've heard from the people who have interviewed you. Um, let's break that stereotype, okay? Uh, next is I'm going to try and host a live guest speakers. I sent them a text message <laughs> asking them. Um, they're out of state. And they are, they, they've been my mentors for a long time. I, I can't say enough about them. They're amazing people. They have held the highest roles, leadership roles in our field. And um, I'm hoping they can join. They're really busy people right now. They're they're on the verge of, you know, they still work, but they should be retiring. And they've moved to a beautiful climate. And they have a beautiful home. Um, and I'm going to see if I can't carve out some time this week. It may not be at our regular time. I may have to record it whenever they're available and post it. But what I'd like to do is have a kind of a, a laid back discussion with them about what they would recommend and talk about their journey um, to what I consider, again, the top of the field. They held the top leadership positions in this field. They know a lot of people and that has taught me a lot. So being able to, you know, socialize with people of their experience and the, what they've done and what they continue to do. I'm sorry, I didn't mean they're not going to, they still are. Um, it is really important to find people like that in your life. Um, Maybe I can be that person. I obviously haven't reached that high level, uh, but I do know a lot of people and I've experienced a lot of things and I'm continuing to learn. And that's, I think that's important. So I've posted a bunch of documents. You saw those. It has to do with the real world case study, which I'll talk about here in just a moment as I kind of run down what I'm going to be doing. So review and reflect on this video and possibly if we have that other one too, uh, do the real world case study. You don't have to write it up as a case report, case study report. Just give me like your, you know, a, a paragraph or a page on what you think um, I should do. And then also talk about actively searching for someone to interview. Um, whether again through its LinkedIn, the contacts we've had in this class or other classes, I want you to try to find someone that you think will give you a uh, some insight and advice that you haven't received yet. So really challenge yourself to find someone. That's it for this week. So yay! All right. So what have I been up to? Well, over break, I okay. So let's let's talk about April first. I was going to bring up my calendar, but it's confusing as hell. So starting tomorrow, if weather allows, I'm going to begin my volunteer role to announce varsity softball games. I did it last year just for fun and I I, I received some, <laughs> uh, I don't want to say kudos or pat myself on the back, but um, I was recognized quite a bit as being a very fair and entertaining announcer. And so I they basically locked me in to do that. And uh, I'm going to be leaving red for this recording to go start testing the audio at the field. So I got that going on. And that's usually two to three times per week. So that's a busy April right there. In addition to that, I have to, uh, for April 12th through the 14th, which is a Wednesday through Friday, I am facilitating a regional operations committee meeting in Chicago um, for my, all of my le safety leaders in ASSP from the upper Midwest. So that's going to be busy. And then I come back. Actually, I announce a game on Saturday. And then I come back. And on the 17th or the 19th, I'll be at the Wisconsin Safety Council Conference and Exposition. I'll be setting up the booth on Monday. And I've got so I already have some appointments set up for some meetings with some vendors um, that I've met through April Air, uh, but also some others. And I'm going to be guest speaking with uh, a longtime friend. I started working with her at OSHA, and she and I, 
Um, I don't think I've... Yeah, you guys heard her speak on a recorded version. She's with HSI. Uh, we're going to do a presentation on the soft skills. And then I'm going to be doing a presentation on my own on safety metrics and safety. And you guys pretty much heard that in my 43 class. I'm just going to update it a little bit. Actually, uh, my PowerPoint's due tomorrow. So I got to work on that this evening. Um, and then uh, we're hosting a SSO ASSP Wisconsin chapter event on the 27th on campus. If anybody's around, it's going to be an industrial hygiene for safety professionals, kind of an intro overview, what's going on in that field. And also we'll have a company that rents out equipment there to kind of talk about it. It's going to be a lot of demonstrations. So um, that should be fun and interesting. We'll have lunch and it'll be networking. So that's my April, lots of stuff going on. And then of course, underneath all that, I've got a lot of stuff going on in my position with April Air. Uh, I'll talk about that in a moment. And um, students are finishing up their loss run data analysis project uh, in my 43 class, and they have to present. So April is going to disappear. And then we get to May. Uh, luckily, I didn't commit to um, presenting at the Minnesota Safety Council, which I typically do. So at least I'll be around for the last week classes. Um, then we've got finals. I've got a family event up in northern Minnesota I have to get to and then post grades. And then softball season wraps up, summer um, summer semester begins, I'm teaching another class, hopefully supervising a room of interns, maybe some of you, that'd be fantastic. Um, and then I have to go to San Antonio for the uh, national, you know, annual safety meeting for ACSP. And I have to leave on the 3rd of June, I come back on the 7th of June, I've got the uh, Wisconsin Chapter Golf Outing on the 13th. 14th, I've got audiograms at, at April Air. <laughs> um, my class starts on the 12th. So <laughs> when, when do I get to breathe? Um, July. July looks like I get to breathe. I'm just teaching a class and supervising other things. I don't know how. I think I'm based on what I'm hearing, I'm probably going to be um, wrapping up my position with um, April Air probably in June or July uh, because they just, um, the person who I'm filling in for just ran out of uh, family medical leave and so they made the decision to move on to the next opportunity. So now I'm, they're holding on to me for a little bit longer. Um, I am a good, uh, what would you want to call it, a good expense for them um, because I'm not, I'm only paid hourly. So only when I'm there and um, no benefits. So if you look at, and I'm part-time, so if you look at it you know, from an accounting perspective, uh, having me around has been very financially beneficial for the company. And I haven't been asking for big investments. I've done as much as I could um, in-house or through small you know, investments and changes. So I will continue to offer that, though it's pretty soon here, I'm gonna be coming up with a, uh, a request for probably five figures in order to um, get our material handling stuff done. So that's what I have going on there. But what I'd like to do is share with you. Um, I write everything up, you guys. Uh, I need to do that. I have good records so that if I'm asked about something, I met with the safety committee for the first time and I will be meeting with them again, not this week, but next week. And this is during um, a three-year cycle of union negotiations. And so I've been putting off my perception survey. Oh, I should check email. I was supposed to find out if they um, signed it. Because if not, then we could, they could go on strike. They'll have to vote on that too. And if so, that's going to change a lot of what I do and the hours that I put in, all that stuff. Um, I'm looking at my email right now. I should have heard yesterday. They didn't say, that's kind of scary um, that we didn't hear. I might have to email somebody to find out what's going on. Um, you know, from what it is, it is. So I met with people and I want to know, you know, who they were, their background, and sort of what concerns they have. And so I documented everything. Um, and what I found is, you know, the issues, what I did is highlighted what I'm going to do. So I'm going to talk to the person in the time office. We're going to find out what we can do to code when they work with me. So it's not this other weird thing. And then it's also within the time book, the amount of time people are spending working with me or doing something with me. 
And so that'll then yield some training that I have to do for everybody to make sure that everybody is aligned with it. And I found out they work on six to 12 minute, so six minute blocks uh, versus 12 minute blocks. And so again, that, you know, their, their piece rate paid and the rates they earn based on the time has a lot to do with what they get paid each week. And so I don't want to disrupt or cause any problems with that. Another one is, um, there were some issues with people using the um, pallet jacks to move around product during shift change and that people aren't getting out of the way. So I, I met with uh, people to try and fix that. Kind of an ongoing thing. Um, they had wanted to possibly use an air horn. I'm like, no, no need. We'll just look out for each other. Uh, I'm gonna be doing daily walkthroughs. That's, that's still coming. Uh, one was air quality or condition of the ventilation systems and the uh, the building guy and, and I, we share an office throughout the week. And so he and I are going to work on that. And um, I'll, I'll provide something in a little bit that shows that, yeah, we're going to start planning that in April. So over a weekend in April, we're going to go and do some studies. Just fortunately, I have a background. <laughs> I have a background. I have, I have experience in doing ventilation studies and design. Uh, what else do we have going on? So there's some issues with cartwheels, cart and, and not not like the the thing. It's the wheels on carts and tables uh, need to be maintained and more importantly inspected. And that they they feel that the SOPs or the standard operating procedures on machines are outdated. And I'm, so I'm going to be reviewing those as part of my um, when I start doing my JHAs and safety audits, which really hope within two weeks comes into play. But again, union negotiations. We got to get past that. Met with another group. <clears throat> I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm going to start doing safety training here very soon. And the case study you guys are doing this week is going to probably be my first topic. Um, talking about the advancement of rates and how many people are stationed. That's that's a costly investment, but there is some safety involved. And so I will I'll lean, I'll provide my expertise on that, my opinions. That... Um, yeah, ventilation, especially in one particular area, um, is a concern. It's been on my radar since the second week, and I just haven't gotten around to working on it because I've been working on so much other stuff, and it's not done every day. It's maybe once a week I see people in there, and it's usually not for a full shift. But you do smell the vapors when they're in there. Um, and I'll be looking at a few other things. So that was a summary of meeting with my safety committee. And then I talked to my boss and brought in the concerns and some other things we were working on. And, um, and I've got them laid out here. So this is going to become my to-do list. And I'll be able to provide through my weekly update to everybody what I'm learning and what I'm hearing. And I got approval to purchase these signs right here. And I met with one of the process engineers and he feels that five would be adequate. And what it provides is it's a sound level meter for ambient noise, provides the time, provides the temperature, and provides the humidity. And I think we can set the faces or whatever. But what's amazing is now um, these signs here are 50 to 100 bucks. This sign here with a sound level meter, but it has all the things, is 200 to 300. So this will help us with educating workers and for supervisors to make decisions on whether the speakers people use to play music are hazardous or not. So that's what that is for. Over the summer months, this will help us create and administer the heat stress prevention program. So my boss liked that. We're gonna to try to buy five of them. So it'll be an investment of either between 250 to 500, depending on what we actually select. And then we'll have to install it. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about this. It's a big deal. We've had a lot of requests for testing new gloves and my our rep, which is MSC, um, they've been bringing around samples and we're trying them out to see if we can't uh, find better options for our workers. Uh, talked about the plant ventilation, and we are going to do that. So initially, they had a bid of about twenty-five thousand to thirty thousand to do this assessment. But I have the expertise. We may have to rent some equipment to do some airflow testing. I looked it up, and they cost about tw uh, forty-five bucks a day. <laughs> so forty-five dollars a day versus this, <laughs> and we're going to do some cleaning. And Max actually going to look into bring in a um, subcontractor to help us with that. 
Um, so instead of 25 grand, we hope to get all that done for under a grand and we'll have a better insight into what would be the next step to ensure effective exhaust ventilation and makeup air. And that's going to be also part of that PVC glue area I talked about. Uh, let's see. So uh, Corey and I, my counterpart, you guys heard from him a few weeks ago. We're working on creating a bid to bring in a local PT clinic to do some uh, work with us. Also, we're going to go ahead and replace the current box cutters that are used, traditional box cutters, with retractable or spring-loaded blades. Uh, she approved that. So they're look at they're a little bit they're a lot more expensive than we did in our trial, and it was the plastic design. Their ability to withstand use is what got a lot of the negative, and so we're just going to go ahead and replace them because too many workers are leaving the box cutters open and just sitting on a cut. So anybody could just bump into it or knock it onto their their foot or leg or someone else. So we're going to get rid of those. Um, got this issue with um, this uh, hand crank pump. It gets this um, vanish. They call it oil. It's a combustible liquid. By adding this nozzle to here and then this being put into the safety can, it'll prevent splashing and extra leaking, and it's safer. And it only costs about 50 bucks. That got approved. I just have to work with these guys to make sure it's the proper fitting. We're probably going to have to get a reducer to make it fit these standard sizes. And they're either 7 8 or um, 7 8 or 5 8 This is a 1-inch outside diameter. We have an area where we've got some material that's been leaking oil, and I found this here. This is about 236 bucks. We need about two or three of these. I'll be meeting with... He was off this last week, so we're going to decide on that so we can collect that. And then just some agreement of what we're going to do with upcoming auditing and training and my perception survey. I'm waiting until we get past the union stuff. Here's the beginning of my work uh, for the report uh, for requesting money for the um, PT, breaking it down. If you guys have had 43 with me, this should look very familiar. Um, and we'll be using the company's loss run data to justify that. And Corey's doing his work um, and I'll be coming back around and finishing that. I had wanted to do it over break, complete it, but way too much other stuff going on. So that's what I've been doing. So that's kind of a rundown of, of what I've been working on. And uh, so the, for this week, um, you guys, I want you to think about something that happened and it, it kind of freaked everybody out. I'm not freaked out about it. We're going to figure this out. So here I was asked to start creating these uh, safety alerts when we have accidents. This picture right here, I know it's gross. This is not from our worker who was injured. It's much, much worse than that. But I'm looking for a visceral reaction in the workers. Because um, we've got these taper machines. Um, they're 3M taper machines. And what I provided you for the website is I've got pictures of it here. I think this will come up. That would be really nice if it did. I've got a lot more pictures and videos. So this is my first try. Uh, I created a Spanish version and English version, turn off the valve, air off, and then enter from the side. Um, why did they put it on here? This isn't even the right machine. Okay, so these are what I made, but this isn't the right machine. This isn't the 3M machine. What the... Heck? So I'll post better pictures. So we had two finger injuries in three weeks. We've not had three in four weeks. Um, this last one is ultra recordable because they went in to get stitches. The others, they um, administered first aid on site. Uh, where is it? Okay, let's try the second one here. And I've got video even to share with you. So I'll take, I'll, pro I'll still keep that one, but now you know. So here's a picture of it here. So um, my, my things are missing. Here is the valve they need to turn off. It's currently on. They also have this, so when this gets depressed and this gets pushed in, it cycles and puts tape on a box. And I actually played with this quite a bit. But if, it, if the tape becomes unlatched from this starting point here, what you need to do is turn this off, open the side panel, and go in and pull it out. Um, but the problem is, when this happens, too many workers, they see the tape dangling in here, they put their hand in there, and then it activates. And so in, do in doing so, they have to push this down and do this. Otherwise, it, what they really need to do is just turn off the air because it bleeds when it does. And I have a video to show you of that. 
I also provided you with, I went and tracked down the actual um, operation manual from 3M. This is supposed to be a safe device. It doesn't have any electricity, it's just pneumatic, but you can um, take a look at the brochure as well. So let's get back to the safety alert, and that's the one I just had up, because I was asked to do it. So here's the deal. We've had three incidents in the last four weeks. It doesn't look like this, but I'm trying to get let them know that right here, you see the tape hanging out? Well, it won't operate. So what they have to do is pull that out. But the thing is, if they just grab in their wallets, you know, energized, they could accidentally activate this and there's a knife that will hurt them. So they just need to turn this off. And look, there's a warning sign right here. Mine were there too. If you look into the machine, there's a warning here and right underneath here is the blade that extends up. So this is looking out here, right out here. And so when you activate these two panels, uh, a serrated knife pops out and you can't really see it here, but it's hidden right here. So if the tape is dangling, it's right there. All it needs to be is activated. And to prevent that, you just have to turn this and it goes, you turn it, it goes, psh, it lets all the air out. But with the tape dangling there, they're reaching their hand in, they're activating it, and then this is happening. So, and they're being trained to do it. We have to train them again and again and again. So, to reset the taper when it misfires, turn off the air, open the side cabinet. That is a secondary lockout thing. Use a tool to grab the loose tape. Pull the tape, lay it on the surface, close the cabinet, turn on the air. Now they should be able to just go again. That's what it takes. How much time does that take? seconds but why are they just grabbing it when it's dangling there because it's dangling there that's why um and so we have to retrain them now you guys know i am mr don't blame the worker right at this point though they are challenging me i don't want to punish them per se but we need to change this behavior this is a thou must just like if you're going to be working on an open edge you need to be tied off and when people are trained to tie it off and they don't do it, we need to figure out what will work. And I am now open to something because I don't think this can be guarded. I don't know what other safety needs to be done to this machine because it's safe as long as it's working. And I know that the maintenance engineers have been working really hard to keep this consistent. So here's what I learned when I started interviewing workers. When the taper is not working well, they may have to reset it every five minutes. When the taper is working well, it works throughout an entire shift. So what do we do? And that's what I want you guys to be thinking about. What can we do to change the behavior to always shut off the air when you have to reset the tape? It, you know, what is, what's preventing them from doing it? Because we've never been able to, uh, we sh I shouldn't say that. We've never had a report of someone getting hurt having turned off the air. And we got to figure out what to do. What sort of discipline should we use? Doesn't fit, turn it off, open up the side, grab the tape, put it back in place, turn on the air, and then that won't happen. So this is something I'm going to be putting out on the plant this next week. And I'm working with the shift supervisors and leads to get everybody trained in that never do this. Never, ever reach for it without the air turned off. Because it's not adding too much time. It's seconds. Seconds to prevent this. So that's what that's the real world, real world case study. I'll be providing additional videos and pictures that are on my computer on camp. I'm sorry, at work. Um, I, I forgot to put them on my Dropbox. Sorry about that. So that's what you guys are going to be working on. Seems really simple. What can we do to modify behavior? Because really, there's nothing we can do from a guarding perspective. And we shouldn't have to. This, this machine is designed to be safe. You can just shut it off right there. It's right there. Um, so... Work on that, will you please? And again, the pictures I send will make it a lot easier. Okay, this is going a lot longer than I'd wanted, and I apologize. I'm going to quickly go through the uh, case studies that you guys did. I think you guys did a fantastic job. I'm um, going to start with... Oh, one more thing. One more thing about the job. So we at the other plant, and Corey talked to me about this last week, um, there was someone being observed um, standing on the forks of a raised forklift can't do that and he was concerned because the it was submitted by someone who's within the union um, and so it needs to be handled with kid gloves so I helped him write this statement here um, 
that documents what occurred based on the picture, why it's important. And so I added the this number here from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Actually, it's from OSHA, sorry. And what how the company responded and then what the company is doing based on it. And I think this is the right way to go. That we admit it was not a good thing. What do we do when somebody doesn't do a good thing and it's documented? We investigate it, we deal with it, and then we try to learn from it. And so I helped him out with that. I think this is the right thing to do. Anyway, so let's uh, let's go over these really quick. I'm not going to talk about scoring because um, I think that that is something that I will do, but I'll talk about it. So I tried to block this out. So here's a case study that one of you did on trench safety guarding. So I try to block out everything. Um, by the way, the executive summary should always go before the table of contents, but that's a minor issue. For the executive summary, they refer to the Bureau of Labor Statistics on deaths due to trenching, very justified. Um, and so collapse are an issue, the cost. I would like it if you had a dollar sign here, you know, might as well give it the right unit, depending on the body part. So uh, cited National Safety Council, great. The equipment found on site is an excavator, a scoop, and shovels and spades, but no blocking. So you can either um, dig at an angle so it doesn't collapse or put in a uh, some protections. Shoring is what they call it. And we call those things game boxes pretty much. So when you're working in it, it doesn't collapse on you because that does happen. Um, talked about PPE, no ladder, and it was more than four feet deep. So indeed, you need a trench box or gang box. No, it's a trench box. That's right. Um, also working in the trench, there shall also be a spotter there. Okay, after reviewing the information by the safety professionals, really need to put in a gang box. They're citing the standard, fantastic. Um, let's see, left unguarded. <laughs> Overall, the information gathered. There's no record of any safety incidents, but doesn't matter. It's a violation. In order to minimize, they need to invest about six thousand dollars to prevent it from happening. Okay, so would have been nice to have a little bit more information, but I understand what they're saying. Um, so it would be nice to have a table that breaks down that set that six thousand versus what it would cost whether somebody got entrapped, how much that costs, or how much OSHA would cite. So that's lacking there. It's a good executive summary. I understand it, but a little bit more information. So I would probably give a 90% because it had a lot, but not everything. All right, we got the scope. I mean, they really laid it out well in the um, um, executive summary. So I'd expect a little bit more here, some more pictures, whether it's Google images generated or ones taken on, on site. Justification is pretty clear. Again, there, this looks like a copy paste job. I don't like that for executive summary. So needed a lot more background up here. Here are the objectives, the methods. Um, it seems a little bit void there of, of actually concrete steps that were taken. You know, it's basically walk up, take pictures. If it's like this, you gotta do this. And then maybe provide a case study of what happened at another place. So a little bit more data could have been provided there. Uh, the results, yeah, recommendations, it's pretty straightforward, I understand. So the recommendations are pretty clear of what needs to be done, but I think a little bit more objective assessment could have been done. So, you know, that's nice, but um, I think an 85% on the technical report the way it's written is pretty good. Could have been a little bit more from a case study perspective. The methods are a little bit void and the intro is a little bit void, but I still think an 85%, I'll go 80, 80% 80 for it because I think the overall writing is pretty good. The overall writing would be more of an 85% and presentation, 85%. So in my book, this is probably a B plus. Yeah, a couple more things could have been done to improve it. Next one, excuse me for that little burp. This was a press machine safeguarding. Again, I tried to block out who it was just for you all. Um, this one here provides some site specific information, executive summary, you know, you know I like that. Uh, there have been no accidents, so they refer to other sources of what could be done. 
Um, that's kind of good. And, you, you know, I I like where, where they're going with this, but I, I still would want to see an actual um, table, which kind of breaks down the, if we do nothing, it could cost us this much versus if we invest or do something different, this is what it would cost to invest and then an ROI. But overall, I understand where they're going with it. It's just I want to look. So this is a pullback device. We had talked about this from my current position, and what I what I found out from the lead engineer is that the the circuitry or electrical in the two hand actuator is not backed up, so it's not the proper classification, which is why they have the pullback devices. So we would actually have to do something different. So they, they we're leaving them in place for now simply because if there was a short or an error. Um, the people could, it, it could become an active one hand actuator, in which case now they can put their hands in. So the redundancy is correct. So I, I should have probably talked about that earlier, but I actually just found about, found out about it last week, not last week, the week before. So that would have to be considered, but a really good job of presentation here and laying it all out. As you can see, um, I think, you know, the methods are very evident and they're the research they did and the people they had talked to and what the results are and what the recommendations are. So I think this is a very thorough presentation of what needs to be done. Um, it just lacks that one table of the cost benefit analysis, which is a big part. And so overall, I, I think this one is definitely a minimum 90%. It's just, again, it's lacking the clear cut table of a um, cost benefit analysis. But otherwise, everything else is here. So this is a very good job. I think this is, I would rank this above the last one, which was a B plus to me. This one would be an A minus. I've got one more to do. Uh, this one is material handling. Again, I tried to block out who it was. The executive summary is very good. It's, it details dates and things and really you know, that there was, a, there was a couple incidents that led to this. And then so what they did is they expanded their assessment to what happened previously as far as that would be somewhat comparable, as you can see. Uh, did a review of what's going on, a citation breakdown. Now, what, so here's what they did. Um, there were some instances and they expanded it to more of like, what would OSHA do if they came in? And I think that's justified. I think that's kind of cool. The only issue is uh, this air nozzle one. They, they called it as a repeat. That's, I just don't think that's justifiable, especially for an air nozzle thing. That is not a hot button issue with OSHA. I would have stuck this to be a non-serious, um, which would have brought down the overall amount considerably because 156 out of 227,000 is, what is that, three quarters of it? just under three quarters, so it'd be a quarter of this. Um, I still think it would be justified in what they expect to do. Um, but so I just, I want things to be a little bit more realistic, more conservative, you know, in my regard. Um, I just saw that I didn't block out one of the things, a couple of things, shit, let's move on. But it was before the table of contents, so it's great. I thought the introduction was very well done. Um, I mean, they did the intro of the context and scope, and then they went into the background. It's just fantastic. This is a great, uh, I would like to use this for classes. Now, the methods are a little bit narrow. You could have talked more about um, the review that went into the preparation and the selection. I just saw another one where I didn't block it out. Um, you want to try and limit maybe the use of the company name and individual names, just so you all know this. Um, if you've got results, I'd like to know a little bit more about what went into it. So the methods were a little bit too lean, but I like the direct language. I do the same thing. I did it for a report I just did. Talked about the owner's manual, just fantastic. Great job, except for the assignment of it. And I, and I know I talked to the student about it and I, um, it's okay you threw it in. It's just, I just didn't like how high of a number you put into it. But good job overall. I think it's a good presentation. I mean, look at they've got the images labeled out. They're actually showing pictures. I think that the use, the what you did here and what you're recommending is going to save the company money. 
Um, I think you could have used work comp, estimated work comp amounts, even though it hadn't happened there in addition to this, but um, I think this is a very thorough report. So fantastic job. So for this one, other than the non-conservative and, uh, and not having a fully laid out uh, method section, this is definitely an A paper. I mean, I'm making recommendations here that would make it even better. Um, so more methods, explain it a little bit more, and uh, more conservative. No, that's, that's all I can say for that one. But fantastic job here. I think just with those two things, be an easy, easy A. But I think this is like a lower A, but still an A. So fantastic job on that. So that's everything. So this was a lot longer than I had thought um, that I wanted to talk about. I'll be adding more pictures and a video here for your case study. I hope that the review of the case study reports helps a little bit. You know, again, I just want you to learn from it. And what can you do to improve on the next one? And so I tried to point that out. Um, just to help you out, help you and your classmates out. So that's what I've got. Um, sooner than later, I'd like to meet with you all. Maybe not this week, but um, next week I would like to talk to all of you. So that's coming up too. Um, but I tried to ease you in this week. But this was much longer, and I will let you know as soon as I find out whether we're having that um, the guest speakers this week and whether we can make it a an option to attend live or whether it will be recorded. So uh, welcome back, everybody. We're back to business.